Hey everyone, how are you? My name is Nate Strager with Luxury Estates International. Today I'm here with Jules Sanchez with Alderis Mortgage. Good morning. Good morning. It is early. <laughs> it is. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Thanks for having me. So Jules is actually a great agent, uh, loan officer. She's always on me with info, <laughs> always sending it to me, always inviting me to to new programs and things like that. So I wanted to have you here so I can interview you because today's topic, I wanted to go over what could happen in the U.S. housing market in 2023. There's been such a roller coaster since COVID hit in 2020. Everybody thought the market was going to drop to the floor. Then it doubled, maybe even tripled in some areas. Interest rates dropped to two and a half, three percent, and then now they're back to high or normal, depends on the opinion. Right. So um, I wanted to have you here and discuss it with you and kind of go from there. So um, how long have you been in the business? Well, thanks for having me. I uh, yes, thank you for uh, um, getting me in and, and listening to all that I send you. I appreciate that. Um, how long have I been in the business? Gosh, since 2005. Okay. Um, prior to that, I was in banking, so I thought, you know. Wanted to offer a little bit more for my clients, so I got in in 2005. Everything was great, and then the crash happened. <laughs> the crash happened, and I actually yeah. went through the crash as well. I actually got in the business just probably one year prior to yeah. you, and it's so new, and you're so green, yeah. and you're trying to figure it out, and then the crash happens, and whoa, what do we do now? Yeah. We're only a couple years in the business. We really haven't built our our client base. Exactly. So it's kind of tough, but you know, I think one thing that I've learned is. You just adjust, you just pivot to whatever the market is. That is key. You, you have to shift, you have to pivot. For sure, you mm -hmm. can't really freak out because real estate will continue. Whether it's selling at you know, 20 cents on the dollar or mm -hmm. 20 cents over, it, over the dollar. 100%. So how was 2022 for you when it comes to business? So actually 2022 um, show, has shaked out real well for me. Okay. Um, it, it did slow down. Um, obviously we know that 2020, 2021, uh, those were anomaly years. Right. I mean, it was a fire sale on houses. It was a blue light special. It was, it was you know, if you didn't get in on it, it you missed out and that's okay. Right. But, um, you know, most of the business in 2020 and 2021 was a mix of purchases and refinances. So um, 2022 tended to be more purchases because that's when the rates started to go up. So I would say that I'm pretty happy with how 2022 shook out for me. Was it one of your best years? It was, I would say it was better than 2019. Okay. Uh, so 2021 and 2020 were my best years. Okay. It was nuts. Uh, my business more than tripled. I couldn't hardly keep up. I had to figure out a way to, to get everyone in because rates were at their all time lows. Right. It was a, it was again um, a strategy type of market <laughs> that we had to make sure we helped a lot of people. Um, so 2022 for me was a little bit better than 2019. I consider it more of a normal type of a year. Right. So it was it was good. And I've been trying to explain to buyers, you know, people are trying to hold off on buying. Uh, because they want rates to go down mm -hmm. and I keep explaining to them two and a half three percent is not normal I don't think that's ever been a, an interest mm -hmm. rate in the history of the United it States has not. so what is normal rate like what is normal rates range what's the normal range for rates in a from somebody that's been in the business 20 years yeah that is a I mean that question I think it needs to be asked because you're absolutely 100% correct. The rates have never been at two, twos and threes, right. ever. Um, even back in 2016, when we were in the threes and fours, rate, I thought, rates, wow, this right. is amazing. Rates will never come down lower than right. this. And they did. Right. So who's to say that they might ever, but that's, again, an anomaly. That's a phenomenon. Um, so normal rates since the beginning, I think in the 1950s is when rates started to, we started track rates until now. Your normal rate, average rate is about six and a half percent. So. And that's where we're at right now. We're right. in this, the mid sixes to the high sixes right now. So as prices are dropping yes. and interest rates are normal, I'm trying to explain to buyers, look, this is the perfect time to uh, buy. Yes. Nobody that got rich in real estate bought at the height of the market. They always bought as the market was, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it's declining right now. I would say it's adjusting. Exactly. But 
go and get that deal from the seller that's desperate who has had his house on the market for three four five months who's yeah. willing to pay closing costs and a rate buy down so most of your business in 2022 has it been purchases or has it been refis it's been purchases in okay. 2022 yeah because okay. again you know people people mainly refinance when rates come down so i think that's key and you you said it it is a perfect time right now because it is quickly shifted and this is what i've seen our market do uh, and you probably have too our market has shifted so quickly it, right. it became it was a seller's market 2020 2021 and it quickly shifted in that first quarter going into the second quarter of this year into a buyer's market and honestly i think it's going to be a short window it's not going to always be that way. It's going to shift again into a seller's market. Once rates start to come down, this is my thoughts based on facts and data. Right. Um, I believe that there there's a small window right now that buyers have where you said it. Sellers are willing to pay closing costs, help them buy their rates down and get into a home. And what buyers need to understand is you're not going to have that same interest rate for the entire life that you're going to live in that home right. or that you have that loan. Yes, it's a 30 year fixed if you get into that, but there's always opportunity to refinance. The rates will come down and I can emphatically say that because it's the trend. That's what happens in real estate. And what's the possibility of somebody even staying in their home 20, 25 years? Exactly. Usually it's three, five, If, if you're like me, you seven. stay in your home for 20, I think I've been there 22 years now, but... <laughs> That's me because <laughs> yeah, I, I stay, but but I, let me tell you what I've refinanced at least five times. Right? No, I I completely you know? agree, and I think um, I think people really, unfortunately, I think people do what everybody else does, but by right. then it's too late. Okay. When everybody else is jumping on the boat, everybody else, you know, it, people are still thinking, 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 thinking. Right. But then the boat is gone. Right. That boat is left, and you know you you have to look at history and the best time to get in is when somebody is unfortunately desperate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you have a seller, it's the holidays, they've been on the market, they want to move family, whatever the case may be, or, you know, whatever the seller's situation mm -hmm. is, um, you can capitalize on it oh, yeah. and, and move on. Well, I think people, people, um, I think we all do this when we when we have the fear of the unknown yeah. we do nothing we sit back we we don't do anything because we are waiting to see what happens but i think it's important as well when when you are a consumer find those experts and understand get information from them and trust that they know what's going on in the market hear what they have to say if you don't have someone that is giving you the information based on facts and data um, and, and possible projections, that's fine. But if you don't have that, then you can't make an informed and well, you know, the decision, sound decision for your family. Well, I think that's why it's so important to go with somebody that actually has been in the business for a while and does a lot of Experience, business. Experience. Because yes. I think in both uh, in both of mm -hmm. our industry, well, it's the same industry, but mm -hmm. you do loans, I do real estate, you know, and, and everybody has to start somewhere. Right. I get it. But, you know, if you're going to if you're going to invest your life savings into a property, you better go with somebody that has experience exactly. and actually does it full time and does a lot of business. Right. So anybody can find you. I mean, do you agree? Anybody can find you a home. Right. It's the negotiations. Yeah. It's the strategies. It's yeah. when the crap hits the fan. You need that experienced you know agent you need this very experienced lending team for sure. Mm -hmm. So as we get into 2023 which is a couple days from now, <laughs> where do you see the, yeah. the first half of the year in real estate in the housing market in general? So I'm gonna speak from the lending side um, because rates have a lot to do with how people react to the market in real estate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's always gonna be a cash. There's always gonna be people that come in uh, with cash. But when we look at interest rates, I'm gonna speak from that perspective because interest rates, we've already seen interest rates take a turn right. for the better right okay they have they calmed down drastically no and we're not going to see them i think we're not going to see them come down drastically they go up drastically they don't come down drastically so the last 30 days if we look at what's happened the almost 30 days we've seen rates kind of stabilize which has not been normal right rates have been if you look at i can show you a chart 
um, of the bond market, and it looks like a heartbeat. It's right. literally it's volatile. Well, for the last 30 days, it's been pretty stabilized, which is very interesting. So that tells me that rates are starting to come down and stabilize because inflation is starting to very slowly come down as well. So Who knows what's going to happen in our, in our market there, but um, I think the first half we're likely going to see it continue. And I also think we're going to see some pockets of that bobble, meaning we're going to see rates go up again and then come down. But I don't think it's going to be sustained. So do you think do you think prices of homes will continue to correct or do you think they'll still kind of plateau off? Do you think it'll become a seller's market the first half of the year? I, I don't know that we'll see a seller's market. I, I'm, I'm going to venture to say, I mean, maybe not the first quarter, maybe maybe in the summertime we right. might see it you know change a little bit because again as rates continue to come down where they've already come down a whole point right. okay so people are starting to i'm actually getting busier now i'm getting more phone calls now because right. people are starting to go oh let me get ready for the new year right um and as it becomes either more affordable or people that don't really care so much about payment they they want a good rate they want to pay less interest. Um, they'll start coming out as well. Um, I think we're going to see maybe it change in the in the second half where it becomes a seller's market. I, I don't know. And that was going to be my say. my follow up question is is where do you see the second half of 2023? Because in my experience in being in real estate, the first two months is kind of slow. People are always thinking, mm -hmm. but then March hits and people get you know, more ambitious mm -hmm. and they want to actually make the jump. Mm -hmm. And then the second half, you know, after the, you know, this is like starting in the summer. So August on, where do you kind of see it? Because obviously when the holidays come, people kind of slow down, right. they want to do less. So where do you see the second half of 2023? Well, we have, you know, summer generally brings on, you know, more people shopping. Right. Um, so we have those cyclical times as well. And then we have what's going on in our current economic world right now. Right. So I mean, I I think we're going to see, I think we're going to see it turn into a seller's market. Honestly, right now there is an opportunity. Right. If you're a buyer, take and you want to take it, and you're, you know, I'm not talking about necessarily those investors. I'm talking about if you're renting right now or you're thinking about moving up because um, you own a home right now. It's your house. We all have a basic need, right, of housing. Right. You know, water and air, um, but housing. You can't really time the market, but you can listen to the experts and go, hey, if you're thinking about it, now's the time, here's why. We're likely going to, again, you're gonna have a better opportunity right now with sellers paying your rate down right. and so forth. So I think we're gonna see um, more competition come out in the middle of the year, possibly towards the end, and then it'll probably slow down a little bit again, like it is now because of Christmas and holidays and end of the year. I think we're gonna see more competition and we're gonna probably see prices stabilize at that time i you agree asked, you asked about prices i think absolutely there needs to be a correction because again 2020 2021 i mean that was crazy it was a supply and demand oh, it was insane completely supply and demand um anytime there's there's shortage of supply prices hike i agree a, a thousand percent i mean it's it's like anything right you have one one you know iphone and 10 people yeah. it's who has the most money yeah, exactly so where do you see the vegas market in 2023 and then how do you compare it to the national market mm. in 2023 and i'll kind of explain why so i'm licensed in, in nevada and california mm -hmm. and i know you're licensed yeah. in, in multiple states multiple states and here there's about two and a half three million people in las vegas there's only about eight thousand homes on the market mm -hmm. not condos not townhouses and in San Diego, where I actually have a brokerage as well, or I'm in a brokerage as well, there's more people in San Diego, as we know. Mm -hmm. I think it's like five days, six or seven, eight, I don't know, some crazy, it's definitely double what it is in Vegas, mm -hmm. but there's only 4,000 homes in uh, on the market mm -hmm. out there. So prices are still rising, regardless of, of the market so how do you see vegas as in compared to the national market you know vegas as you know is is very unique market mm -hmm. i mean i don't think it there's many markets like vegas i think we get hit harder um and as we were in the 
service industry. I think we're moving where it's not so service industry heavy right. anymore. And I think that's going to be a, a, a key for us because now we have like the professional teams that are here. We have Amazon. Well, we have Amazon here. So so I think it, it's our even our market has shifted. So we we tend to get hit a little bit harder because of some of those things. But then we tend to recover even quicker th- that I've seen and the, and the number of years that I've been here. So I think that um, as p- and people still want to move here. Yeah. And we see a lot of you mentioned California. There's a ton of Californians yeah. still moving here. I mean, it, it's a great state it, with taxes. It's a great state. There's so many things around us, um, a lot going on in our state. So it's a it's an exciting state. I think we have a lot of exciting things coming as well. So because of that, it's a unique market. I think we're going to continue to see maybe a stabilization. I don't think we're going to see anything shoot up. So I don't think we're going to see a lot of declines. We might see uh, some corrections and maybe in some areas, just like any state has their pockets and areas where you might see a slight decline, but I don't really see we're going to see declines. It's nothing like the crash, obviously. Um, I think it's going to stabilize. Well, I think it's different as well, right? Because New York mm-hmm. is different from Wichita, Kansas. Exactly. Or from New Mexico mm-hmm. or <laughs> or from L.A., right? Yes. So. Uh, I think each state, I agree with you, is is different, mm-hmm. and um, I agree with you as well. You know, before we just had service industry; it was a party town. If the economy is down, nobody's traveling, mm-hmm. nobody's going to party. But now you're right. We have sports teams, we have um, Amazon, we have mm-hmm. so many more companies moving here because there's no state tax. Right. So that that really really helps. And, I, and there was a, a big meeting that happened earlier this year with tech. So I mean, yeah. Silicon Valley, you know, it, that it could be coming here as well. Could be the Vegas Valley. Could be the Vegas Valley. Um, do you see, so with prices going up, mm-hmm. um, do you think affordable housing will ever come back? <laughs> well, there's something I'll share with you that nobody is talking about. Okay. You can go onto the, the, the White House website okay. and even this current administration, I don't even know what it's called. It's called the Housing Supply Action Plan. Uh, the the current administration actually put this act into place the beginning of this year in May, and it's all about affordable housing. Again, nobody's talking about it, but here's why I think that our real estate market across the nation is going to continue to be very strong. It was strong in 2019 before we went into the pandemic, and basically we're we're at near those numbers right now um, in 2022 where we were in 2019. Uh, but what's interesting, we're gonna continue to have a supply issue, okay. okay? Because there's not enough homes on the market to support the population growth. And we've got our Gen Zs, right. we've got our millennials, they right. wanna buy homes right now. And I can show you a chart, I can show you data that shows the last 10 years, we have not built enough homes to keep up with the pace of the population. And it's in the millions. Wow. It's in the millions. I didn't know that. It's in the millions. Okay. So when the crash happened, the builders, eh, you know, they all took a step back and stopped building homes at the pace that they were building at. And now we've got a major shortage. And the government has enacted this act to help the affordability. And it's not on the buy side. It's not on the purchase side. It's on the renting side because they understand that as our prices have increased. Now we're having, an, there's gonna be an issue if there already is an issue. There's already a challenge of people affording even rents and that there's not even enough housing available. So in certain areas across this, the nation, they're gonna go into these areas and they're going to create these communities of rentals. Which isn't the American dream, right? No. And so I, Again, I agree with you. I think so. I have land listed like 10 acres at a time Mm -hmm. and whatnot. And these builders are holding off because they still have so much inventory that they have to get rid of. But the problem is, is that, you know, everybody was buying because the rates were low Mm -hmm. and they were able to get into the and um, builders were able to charge more. And now we're at a correction. They're trying to get rid of the inventory at the last land auction. No builders bought land. Wow. And there's only five pieces in Vegas around 10 acres and I have one of them and they're not buying and even out of even out of state developers I they're just not even looking at it so with the banks selling a lot of their non-performing first trustee notes to black 
I think it's Blackstone mm -hmm. and a couple others, um, they're selling them for rentals. And so they're trying to, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I feel like they're trying to push our, our, our economy into rents and not mm -hmm. buy, mm -hmm. you know, because financial security is, you know, especially for the hardworking blue collar worker is having that equity in your mm -hmm. home Absolutely. for you, for your family, for, for the future. So unfortunately, and maybe uh, a company like Boxable, who's building those mm -hmm. yeah. smaller homes for, I think it's like under a hundred, hundred thousand grand, 50 grand yeah. is amazing. Right. I mean, right now. Yeah. I mean, and for me, I'm, I'm becoming more of more and more of a, a, a minimalist. So mm -hmm. that kind of brings me to my last question. Do you feel that there's more and more million dollar plus homes mm. out there now? I think that's a question for you, but <laughs> well, what are you yeah. seeing on the jumbo side so, on the, are you seeing more and more like jumbo loans and, and things like know, that? Interestingly enough, I'm not, I'm not seeing a difference Okay. right now. Okay. I, I mean, not to say that that could change, into 2022 as um you know we get more business owners that move out here more more money that comes into this town right you know um that's that's a that's an interesting question i you know i'm not sure how to answer that because i don't see a change right now right but that could change i see more million dollar homes but i think there's more and more of a separation of class absolutely from i think there's less less and less middle class I think it's more and more people that are just killing it. Mm -hmm. And then the working class, which is unfortunate, but the working class now, and I'm sure and I'm sure you've seen it. I, I probably missed this question, which I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But before you could have one person on a loan, maybe two. Now you're seeing now my forms, instead of having two signature lines, mm -hmm. have three and mm -hmm. four signature Absolutely. lines. Because you need all four incomes well, yeah. just to qualify. You need it. And now I think even even young people are understanding like, hey, I can house hack now. Right. You know, let me let me get some buddies together and let's all buy this house. Right. Um, or maybe I qualify, but I don't want that payment. Right. And they, they're doing these different structures, which I think is very smart. Uh, because, again, it's if you can buy and you have the means and you are responsible to buy, you should buy. Absolutely. And another thing also, you should never get into a, a home with a mortgage that you're going to end up house poor, exactly. where you can't go to the movies, you can't go on that trip. Right. There's no point just sitting in your house, looking at four walls, thinking I can't go anywhere because right. my mortgage is so high. Right. Um, and even more so, I think people might even justify it by, well, I work at home, but I'm like, my goodness, you got to get out of your house. You have to have a, a You got to get out. You got to have a life. And I 100% agree. So, so one of the things that people, I, I've been telling a lot of our buyers now is, hey, make sure that you can afford the payment right, right now. And then remember, later on, when rates do come down, it could be as early as first, second quarter, sometime into next Nobody year. Nobody knows. Nobody knows, but we'll, we'll can refinance. Right. So we have a client for life program where you, if you're, if you're not a hero, where you get your underwriting and processing fees waived, you're going to get your fees waived for those on any subsequent refinances. Which is so, an awesome program. Yeah. I've, I've actually never seen a lender yeah, do that. Yeah. So we want to make sure we're taking care of people like that. So when we tell you, hey, you're going to refinance, I'm not trying to, you know, make a bunch of money. I want to help you. Right. Yes, we get paid for that, but, but we want to make sure that I want you coming back to me. I want to help you with your plan and your goal for your life. Well, you're able to get in at a, at a, at a lower price point than mm -hmm. as you gain equity and then get lower interest mm -hmm. rate. Exactly. So tell everyone something uh, that nobody knows, something personal. Let's forget business. Uh, I play guitar. Oh, great. I didn't know that. Yeah. I would love to play guitar, yeah. but I'm too uncoordinated. <laughs> no, you can learn. You, you can know? learn. It's all about uh, muscle memory on your, on your fingers. <sighs> you got to get over that past. I would say it takes about a couple months. It could even be weeks if you're constant, but it's the hurt and the pain of the fingers. <laughs> that sounds like a... Yeah, it, that's, that part's not fun, but once you get past that, then it becomes really fun. Unfortunately for me, it takes me probably three times longer to learn something <laughs> than the normal person. I don't believe it. Um, so how can people find you? So uh, you can find me by um, just giving me a call. Um, I'll actually give you my, my cell phone. I use my cell phone for personal business, 702-580-6206. I text, um, call. Um, there's email. You can link the email if you'd like to. 
So I think that's actually awesome that you do a client for life mm -hmm. where, you know, you're not trying to make a ton of money on the refi, but you're able to get them in, yes. allow them to start building equity. It's a tax write off. Yes. If they have a plumber or something has to fix something, it's a tax write off. You know, all the, all these things are a tax write off when you're renting, there's no write offs. Right. So, um, well, awesome. Well, I appreciate you being here and taking the time and I know it's early, uh, <laughs> but you know, we need to get these done early because I have a full day. And yeah. I'm sure you do as well. Absolutely. So um, thank you so much for coming. Call her. I didn't even know about that program. And for more tips and content, make sure you like, share, and follow. Thanks, Nate. Thank you. <laughs>